YouTube, so I'll go live there. All right, we should be live in both places. Hey, everybody, I hope you're doing pretty well. As you know, this is kind of an early morning stream for me. It's a little bit different time than my normal streams, and I want to thank everyone who does come in today to support me, if you do here in, um, for our big time streams. Now, as you know, I've been talking these up the last few days. I do plan to give away that lucky crate in the near future. And I do have today with me a special guest. He is the one who helped me become a creator in the big time ecosystem. Uh, do you go by Jack when referring to you? Sorry. I oh, yes. Yeah. Uh, any, any side, but yeah, usually I go by Jack. Okay, yeah. So th this is Jack. We connected through Discord, luckily, through some acquaintances. He brought me in as a creator after he saw my account, saw my YouTube count, account, and I, I do appreciate that a lot. It's always fun to be able to take, you know, support a game, uh, uh, you know, the way that we do as creators and then have them support us back a little bit. Now, when I've been introducing to people to big time, I've been trying to explain the game. And for me, the way I look at it as its current build, it's a little bit like um, a World of Warcraft mixed in with a bit of a Diablo kind of feel. At, but at the same time, it gives you access to actual ownership of NFTs while also letting you just play a game if you just enjoy the game. Uh, you can kind of decide if you want to take that step into the cosmetic world of the NFTs and the special world of the, the uh, what do you call it, the um, prestige dungeons. And, you, you know, eventually as this game grows and comes into full release, I see there'll be two types of players. There'll be the players that are kind of in between those two areas. And then, you know, everybody will constantly be tempted to take that next step, which is one of the amazing things I see in big time. Is there any other things that you'd like to add to kind of where I'm at with how I feel about the game right now or, or give your opinion? Oh yeah, it's uh, it's an awesome presentation for a start, and um, yeah, I personally think that big time is one thing that is completely new in the Web3 ecosystem, is that the objective is to mainly have gamers. It's not a pure Web3 game. It's a game with an economy, and since the economy is completely optional, um, it really uh, powers up the, the the ecosystem with just players that are here for the game. So a full free-to-play player can um, can get NFT drops. So that's uh, a nice little um, nice little push on uh, considering time as an investment, which is rarely purely done on a Web3 project. Um, and uh, yeah, as you say, people will uh, will pass from a pure Web2 to Web3 uh, naturally because yeah drops and uh, the thing that i find interesting with the nft tech uh, is that no one is just a consumer if you buy something you own it it's yours so yeah yeah, yeah and, and that's one of the uh, great things i like about it like just to, to caveat a little bit on my story as i came into this game so I came in, I was trying it out as a free-to-play player, I was going through it, I was playing kind of solo, then I reached out to the community on Twitch finally, found some people to play with, and I found my first NFT, that was this one right here, it, um, I'm sharing it on the video, this uh, uh, Wheatstone, it's basically a, um, oh, what's the word? <laughs> the emote? Yeah, the emote, it's an emote, duh, it says it right there. Um, so I found this emote and then, you know, as soon as I found that first NFT and, and it, it kind of excited me, I decided to take a deeper look into the game and decide what to do next. So then I, I because everyone told me they were so rare, I went out and bought a Time Warden. So I bought this rare Time Warden and then I started renting it out because one of the great things about Big Time, unlike a lot of the other games, is their economy side and their rental market and their overall market it's built out really well. It works really well. There's absolutely no problems here. So I've been renting this thing out for about um, three months 
bringing this in and that's what's let me get you know my space my armory um my first hourglass and then eventually as play, playing through the game with those people i went and found this chair so this is my first rare nft that i found awesome so now there's a cool little chair chilling in my epic space and then one of the other things that's very interesting about this game is the way that they're driving their economy mm -hmm. to be uh you know once people dig into it and want to get into it the big time token becomes very important all of the nfts become very important if you own a space and you want your space to be really producing the things that it can produce you need to own the decorations because those give you added bonuses in your spaces now so this chair actually helps my space produce more of the items it can produce the um, to go into the portals, the prestige portals, you have to be wearing certain types of NFT armors or have equipped different kind of NFT emotes or hourglasses so that your character can meet those requirements. To go into those portals, you have to play pay big time tokens or time crystals or the other uh, currencies in the game. And then those those same things are the kind of things you earn in those portals. So it's a it's a it's a game of pay some to earn more. And then when you go to do your crafting within any of your armories or forges, you are also paying those same things that you are earning in the game. So it, it has a very good circular economy of me constantly needing to get more of the the different currencies within the game and spend them within the game. Which is one of the reasons why I think, you know, the token has a good future, a good use case, and we don't have to worry about the crazy runs that you might like, the crazy dumping of tokens that you might see in other places. Because as soon as this token starts to dip a lot, if somebody owns a decent amount of NFTs, they can go, oh, look, I can go ahead and craft some new hourglasses or craft some new armor a lot cheaper than I could last week. Yeah, that's the that. that's the very interesting part. Like the the market is completely free uh, on the on the pricings mm -hmm. of the NFTs and the token because um, Big Time has no shares on the token, and the token is only generated by the players in uh, leaderboard and in prestige portals, as you said. And um, yeah, it's very interesting to see that there's nothing you can do with that token in the the marketplace in the open loot, basically. The only thing you can do in the uh, big time economy with the token, it's fueling any transformation of NFTs, creating resources, refining them, creating NFTs. And yeah, if people want to use it as a reward token, as most Web3 tokens uh, are used, you actually need to take it out and sell it outside. So the, the real goal of big time is to give the will to the player that produces that token to re-inject it inside the pool by crafting. And, um, and yeah, it's a very, uh, very long project. Uh, basically, we got a seven years uh, project with, um, with the pool getting filled artificially with the token that are coming released bit by bit. And, um, and yeah, bit by bit, the functions and utilities of every NFT and the token is, is coming up with the players rising. And yeah, at the moment, we, we already have a lot of token used in the, in the crafting. So a good yeah uh, and good then we'll, we'll the touch future. base a little bit more on the leaderboard since you brought it up there as another place tokens are generated so the game does have a leaderboard a point system they they, they do a post for each one of them they do all the different things that you can do to earn points and then all the players play throughout the season to try to get higher onto the leaderboard and then they get to collect a reward at the end of the season now the reason why those leaderboard rewards can be there is because all the quests that they give them require them usually to use a lot of big time token in crafting in running prestige portals in doing various different things because to get higher and higher on the leaderboard they also have a system where nfts will have a maximum capacity but they can come back to life and 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 let me explain this so like you might have um a sword here that's a rare sword that has a limited amount of copies of 1500 but to get this sword upgraded to the epic version of the sword i have to burn three of these nfts so then this this supply would go down from the max 1500 if it was maxed out and go down to 490 1497 
and then an epic would be spawned. Now there is an eventual max max supply when the max legendaries are reached. Are are the ma max exalted? Or wait, is there one more past exalted? There's um Yep, the unique there is. in the crafting. Unique. Yeah, so they're, they're, they'd have to have max unique, max exalted, max legendary, max epic, max rare, max uncommon, and then the max common version of that NFT would would be full, and that would be the only time an NFT would completely be minted out, and that will happen eventually. I don't know. Has that? Do you know if that's happened to any of the NFTs yet? Have they, no, not at all. Gone? The the crafting economy side is released for like about five months. And um, the seasons are supposed to be much shorter than that pre-season is lasting, but we got much less crafters at the moment than we will have in the future. So this pre-season is basically being uh, extended with different leaderboards to get all the data needed to settle the, the rhythm of the seasons. But the idea is that at each season, that when it starts, all the old supplies of crafting and the droppable NFTs are destroyed and the new collection comes out. At each season, we create two collections, the droppable, the craftable, and they are proportional to the number of players and the rarity. So at the moment, as you see, that legendary uh, is a max supply of 500, but that's technically the third collection that came out of NFTs. It's the pre-season. Uh, before that, we had the early access, and before that, we had the origin. And a legendary origin supply is 100. Possibly, yeah. when we get to, to the next season, uh, it's going to be a 700 or a 1000 legendary series. So the idea yeah. is that it will never be fully crafted, I think, because there's a lot of different things to craft and uh, only during a limited amount of time. So at the end of the season, that's supposed to last only three months. Uh, everything that's not crafted, burned, supplies, updated. Okay, so yeah, so that that makes a little bit more sense. I I did I did know that with each season, new ones come out. I didn't realize that all the old ones weren't able to be crafted yet. I'm still just starting myself to dip into crafting. I got my armory just a little while ago. I'm I'm planning to do my first craftings probably starting next month. So. Uh, eventually guys i'll be able to show you that and and my journey into that part of the game but i haven't quite made it there yet so now i'll go ahead and just log into the game i think it's always important to show the game the game is impressive it has a very good look to it a very good feel to it but it still is in an early uh, release yeah, so. well, we got uh, in the last AMA, the developers um, said that they actually arrived at 10% of the game's content lately on the last uh, update. So when I arrived a year ago, uh, I'm a player for about a year, uh, we had 5% of the game and it was already crazy with a high replayability. Uh, I passed my first month playing 6 to 18 hours a day. At the end of the first month, uh, I considered myself in the start of the mid game and um, at the end of the third month technically I was in end game but I never had that feeling I never had that feeling that the mid game was finished to stabilize and optimize yeah because so you always right now, find better stuff if, if you look at the way that they have the, the game built out they have all these different zones and like you said this is only the start of this game and me, a player who's been playing a little bit more casually, probably about two to three hours a day, I'm a, a four, probably four and a half months into the game. My, my highest character is only level 43, so I haven't even really reached the game content of the game yet. So it does, you know, there there is a bit of a grind to this. But the feature set that they've built is very interesting because you play one character. This one character can hold multiple different pocket watches that you find throughout the ecosystem the pocket watches have different tiers and the different tiers allow different things uh, the main thing is that the higher tiered watches tend to have better stat points the ability to get better roles for the types of things they can have and then the ability for you to equip additional gears so if i change this to my poor uh T tier 3 watch that I was leveling up which is my level 43 character as cool as he is and as strong as he is and I do enjoy this character 
when I go in here to this watch, oh, they're not even showing right now. Let me go look around. That's probably just a little display bug there. Where did my gears go? <laughs> well, um, this one can only hold two gears and then the tier fives can hold three. Do you know, can the tier sevens hold four or is it kept at three? Yes. Are you aware? No, no, it can go up to five. Up to five. Okay, yeah. So it can go up to five different gears. Maybe let me try one of my other tier, lower tier watches because I don't know why this one is not showing my gears. Oh, um, if it doesn't show, or you go to your metaverse and you'll see it, or you just right click on any gear that you are supposedly able to wear, even if it's red, and it will just sl uh, slot it in and uh, make your gears appear. We'll go ahead and go into the metaverse because then we can run around here and kind of show people how this works. There we go. So here we go. Now you can see this tier two watch only holds two gears. And then my tier five watch that I'm starting to level up is this one. This one holds three gears. So so the so the way the system works is oh, that's kind of funny. <laughs> I didn't know that that little glitch was going on. But the way the system kind of works is you join the game, you get what equates to a tier two free watch from going through the tutorial and getting into the game you start to play as you advance in your levels you'll start to find additional watches that are a higher rarity those additional watches will be one of any one of the characters in the game so while your first run through i played as a quantum fixer i then played through i'm now playing through as a shadow blade character there's chronomancer watches i have a warrior watch that i pushed up to like level 15 so you get to play all the different characters on your one character. Now, each time you change a watch, you're going to have your own bags and you're going to have your own set of regular equipment. But if you build up an NFT collection, and yes, mine is not that built up yet, <laughs> but I do have my player title from my days of playing alone in the beginning. I was the Lonely Knight. I do have my one, my one e emote that I collected. And then I do have a little collection here of cracked hourglasses that as soon as my time warden is off that rental, I'm going to break some of these down. I do own one regular uh, hourglass, but I also need to have that one recharged when I get back my time warden. That's kind of an example of some of the things the time wardens can do. And then just to break down for you guys, this is um, your free space. So everybody gets a free space that has this little web, web uh, this little crafting bot. So this is how you can be able to put gems into your weapons that, that give them some added functionality. Then you get yourself a stash. You can see mine is just full of random items that I have been collecting, the different unique items that I have found, um, various different items that I think will be good for characters at different levels and you can decide what you want to keep inside here then if you buy a space you get this so now i have this additional space i know it's kind of sparse it only has a chair i'm thinking about getting a desk to go with the chair and a few other things and then for me i have a small space so it has two doors one here and one here now i don't have anything attached to this door so i can put my time warden on it when i get it back but over here I have my armor. So as you run out here, I thought this is a pretty cool looking place. I have my, my level three armory that I bought and here's where I can do my different crafting or I can do my different refining. Now these are things that you can find playing the game for free. As you can see, I have enough to do a refine, but I'm gonna have to get a little bit more big time token into the account. So I am planning on doing that in the next couple days and then doing my first refinery of these augmented cores. Oh, a good point. I seen that you have a lot of mod chips, uh, really a lot of them. Um, it's interesting to use them when you do refining uh, because you can, uh, you can get a higher tier or double output. And that's really cool bonuses. Yeah, that's one of the things, um, whenever you're crafting, 
And when you're playing the game, and they've seen me find these on, on the way, I have a, a stack here of 39. So, like, all together I have it's huge. a little over 4,000 mod chips. <laughs> I've and, built um, some uh, bunny ears yesterday. And with the 1,000 mod chips, uh, I managed to get uh, great bonuses on uh, five different crafts. And one of them gave me, gave me double output. With yeah, just a thousand. Yeah, so what what those allow you to do is when you're crafting things, you get to roll for a bonus. These bonuses can be can be a lot different, but the main things they can do from what I know, they can lower the cost of a craft, so it doesn't cost you as much as stuff to make it. They can yeah. make it so that you get an additional rarity skip is one of the best ones I've heard of. So you could be crafting yourself a common item and instead you get an uncommon or you could be crafting yourself an epic item and instead you get a legendary. Um, there's also some, all of these take time. So there's ones that say that it's going to shorten the amount of time that it's going to go. I think those are the main bonuses is, is cheaper to make and, and more stuff. Oh, and just yeah. a quick shout out to uh, DeFizz and Birds, Bees, and Trees and Luke. Um, Luke, all you have to do to get into the game, sorry, I didn't see that, is on my pinned message, click on my creator link. You'll be able to get a claim. There's a great tutorial. They'll walk it through. You'll get to level five. And then anytime any of you want to play with me, all you have to do is come join one of my live streams. I will glad you gladly run through a low level dungeon with anybody that wants to anytime. I don't mind doing that. It's very easy for, you know, I have multiple watches, so I'll be able to do that. Um, if you have any other questions, Luke, do let me know. Sorry, I, I got so caught up with talking with you, I wasn't totally paying attention to my chat. Sorry about that chat. And yet, yeah, for Jigs and Trees, I was the lonely knight. It was it was a funny, funny experience in the beginning. Now, <laughs> yeah, I, I have... First, uh... Oh yeah, go ahead. My first title was the Bug Buster, at the moment where I was just grinding every detail of the game to try to understand all the mechanics. It was pretty funny to drop that. Yeah, yeah, I have found the the one complaint I've mentioned to some people in my stream, and it's not so much a complaint because I know you guys are working on this and we're in early access, but the, the party making system isn't spectacular. Oh yeah, I, it's it's uh, that's actually on the next patch. The the open beta is gonna have a lot of features that are huge, including uh, automatic matchmaking, in-game uh, friend lists, uh, direct messages, like a lot of really important tools, uh, character customization, um, business between players with gold, like uh, being able to sell the gears, the swords, and stuff like that. Uh, in-game. Uh, Email model and yeah. the Epoch City, the new big hub that's going to be huge. Yeah, th that's the big update that I think a lot of us are waiting for. And so anybody oh, who's yeah. coming in new, you're not going to have to wait as long because right now the party system kind of only shows you new, new by players. It doesn't have an innate way for me to message these guys and ask them if they want to do normal dungeons or if they're looking to do prestige. So you yeah, got to kind of just two years. Everyone uses the discords. <laughs> Basically, that's why there's a lot of guilds build up. Um, the official Discord has a list of all the official guilds, and every guild is a Discord, so uh, people usually yeah. meet in vocal. For sure, that, that has been. I'm gonna do something really quick just to make sure this doesn't overwrite our talk now that I'm in the game. Turn this down just a little. But. Um, one of those things that I, I've mentioned is that that update was coming and eventually the party making system will be a lot easier um, and, and it'll, it'll, be, it'll be a lot cleaner. It's not impossible right now. And like he said, one of the ways that you can do it and you can get into groups, you can go into Twitch and look for some of the smaller content creators or come to my channel and ask me to do a run with you. You can yeah. also then get directed by many of the different uh, members of the uh, different guilds out there and I'm actually in one um, I am in it's me it's uh, it's the me F F I E R S is I are no met met fires met fires that's how you say it again so I know they're one of the guilds that are listed they have a kind of a partnership with another one of the big guilds is the fam guild 
and so I'm getting more more involved with them and so that that's one of the good ways to do it today but once we get those in-game friends list those in-game direct messages to the people you've played in the past the ability to run with people and if they're a good player add them to a friends list it's going to change things a lot and yeah so that's going to be pretty pretty exciting for sure definitely it was important i guess in the start to not have those tools in the game to create a strong community a lot of people that would never have come to discord were kind of forced to because we had no wiki, we had no tutorial. Uh, you, you really needed to meet people to be able to buff up your game. But now that that most of these uh, social links are strong and uh, all these communities are sharing knowledge and it, it's it's common to be help helping each other. Uh, yeah, all these tools are are the next step that's gonna really power up. Yeah, yeah, and, and that's definitely something that's been big about Big Time. They've been releasing things very quickly. Anybody that gets into the game now and starts playing it now, you are playing in the early access phase, but, you know, that's always a nice little bonus. Right now, I'm going to run over to these little bots here. So they have this little army of bots for you to test out your moves on. It's, it's not a bad idea when you first come into the game or when you first get a new ability to just stop by here and see what your ability does before running into battle. Uh, the game in general, guys, has a pretty interesting little combo set when you're attacking. You can see here, you have to, like right there, I'm, I'm kind of messed up my combo. The idea is there's two ways to look at it. You can attack when your weapon turns gold. And there I did it right. Or you could try to time it to when the dot turns green. I'm more visual and go with when the weapon turns gold usually. And then after you've done this for a while, you're going to have this memorized. If yeah, you have a and there's a little weapon, sound also. Helps a lot. Yeah. If there's a little a weapon that, uh, like the different weapons look a little bit different. There's also, the finisher move is the right click. You can do it after one attack. And you do that kind of finisher. You can do it after two attacks. You do that finisher. You can do it after three attacks. This is the final one. Do that one. So there's a lot of variation just in your base attack. Then you have all your abilities. So I am a Shadow Blade that has Shurukens, Blade Kicks, which is an interesting ability. I'm actually a Shadow Blade that can do a decent amount of damage from far away. I have that wind kick. I have this one to kind of escape, backflip and get away. Then, like any good shadow bleed class, I can try to get behind a person, do a backstab attack for quite a bit of a damage. This one I find kind of funny, sweep the leg. Little uh, little shout out to Karate Kid there. <laughs> and my last ability on my my last two abilities on my bar, there's traps that you can set. And the, the uh, skill that like every player in the game seems like they want right now, which is the ninja leap, it's really just to move faster. Uh, you can get a pair of pants that gives that little ninja leap to any class. Like that. I always think it's kind of funny to see like really high level people running around wearing like level 20 or 30 pants just so they can do It's this. Uh, tier 2 and terrible stats, yeah, the ninja yeah. leap. <laughs> but uh, that just everyone does it. Uh, the thing is, the pants only gives dexterity and agility. And well, the only people that really cannot deal with not having these stats is the people that already has the ninja leap. Yep. So uh, it's yep. not very problematic. You lose a bit of uh, comfort stats uh, and that lets you equip easier other high level stat that gives you your main stat. But I think the, the ninja leap is so powerful that yeah, it's normal that everyone uses it. Yeah, yeah, I have noticed it has been completely normal. I finally stopped using it on my Quantum Fixer, but I still have the pair of pants. I might put it back, but it was only because I didn't really want him always at the front of the line, and I found a decent pair of pants with, like, 50 movement speed on them. Yeah, so he's cool. just he's just naturally really fast. Um, but I, I still do know that the, the thing that this does that... that being fast doesn't do is if you're in a in a bad spot with monsters you can just get away and yeah, then, the security <laughs> yeah the other part is um they can if you're good with it you can do some interesting thing with jumping 
So if you jump off of a big cliff, I've heard you can you can jump if you can hit this at the right time, you can basically save yourself, which uh, allows you to do some much more aggressive running through some of the dungeons. Oh, if uh, you want to do it, is in the other way. You basically start your dash, and a third of a second after you jump, and you have to do that on a plain area. Uh, it cannot be going down. Uh, and if you do it right, basically at the end of your dash, you just hit the floor, which stops the deacceleration of the end of your dash, and you just fly. Uh -huh. So it's a dash jump. I haven't tried this before. Let me see if I can find a little bit more flat area if I come up here. Yeah, and bit by bit you'll see which textures allow you to do that, which angles allow you to do that, but most of it allows... Uh, oh. It's not very hard to, to set. Basically, when you are halfway from the dash, you jump. When you're halfway through the dash? Yeah. Like, the dash makes you do, like, oh. six meters. That after three meters, you jump. Hmm. I don't know if this area just We timing to you... catch. Oh, there's an interesting question uh, in your Twitch chat. Um, his friend uh, has an NFT weapon, and he wants to give it to him. Uh, and he wants to know how... Uh, can it be done and if there's a trading system at the moment we didn't create uh, a system to uh, offer from an open root account to an open root account what a lot of people do uh, when it's uh, nfts that are to be used uh, for their utility is that people rent between each other with a huge discount so basically it's borrowing for cheap uh, but if it's somebody that just got the nft and doesn't want to play it anymore um, wait a bit because we can basically take the NFT out in a MetaMask and send it to somebody. That's like any NFT. Uh, but there's a temporary lock on that uh, with a $50 uh, fee uh, because there were some abuses on that feature. So we are fixing those um, those features and uh, in some time uh, it's going to be back to uh, Free. Well, basically, you will just pay the gas fee. So if you wait for really late in the night or the weekends, it will cost like three or four dollars to take it on your MetaMask, and the same to send it to somebody. Uh, maybe even lower if if the the guai is low enough. The the use of the Ethereum network, basically. Yeah, yeah, but he's right. The 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 I was going to say the same thing. The discounted code that you can create on a rental makes the most sense. Uh, can you create a discount code for a sale too, if you wanted to? No, no. Okay, only for sales. Uh, sales are flat. That makes sense because otherwise they could just use that as a way to get around uh, what you're trying to prevent. <laughs> so, exactly. Unfo un unfortunately, abusers do, do make things not as good. Yeah, but one of the easier ways to do it if your friend is just looking to let you use the sword is to do that rental give you a, a put a discount code on the rental uh, typically if they're going to do that you might want to have them set the rental a little bit higher than the other uh prices for the same item because if not the rental market can be competitive sometimes and if he tries to put up like something really cheap and then also make it cheaper for you uh somebody else might get it before you because yeah exactly for for small items you can easily get get for like a dollar or a bit less but yeah if you are borrowing a time warden to someone uh, the best is to just list it a tiny bit more expensive than the floor price and add a 90% discount. And yeah, that's the way people borrow stuff uh, between friends with no risk. No, it's like a direct smart contract that uh, deals with the security. So it's much simpler. Yeah, th that, that would definitely be the best way to, to get those NFTs in there from one account to another for now but it's good to hear you guys are, are working on that system to be able to allow them to, for us to take them out of the game now I, I had a question it was for a long time um, I, I, I just realized if that's prevented I had been talking about giving away one of my if I go uh, to box. My collection, one of my boxes can I actually move these to other accounts or no uh, well, it, it would be good to wait that this $50 fee is out, but uh, gotcha. it shouldn't take that long. Uh, but another thing you can do, uh, if you want to do that giveaway quick, uh, is that you can just give away dollars to buy a box. 
uh, and that's oh, zero that makes P sense. because you can send dollar from open loot to open loot without passing by a MetaMask. And if you pass by Solana, it's a zero fee. So you can actually send 35 cents to someone, you know, it, it, it can work. And that's a big concept. Okay, okay, that makes more sense. I, I, did, I did tell them that my plan was to give one of these away, but that I wasn't going to be doing it right away as I'm just starting to become a, a big-time streamer. I wanted to wait until I've been doing this for a little longer. I want to I nice. figure out how I would do that the best way. So, uh, One important uh, point with those boxes, I personally really don't like the idea of opening them. But you got two, and this week there's an event of if you open two lucky boxes, you get a lot extra uh, leaderboard points. So if if you have interesting, boxes to open, it's I, a good I wasn't week. really going for the leaderboard yet because I don't run prestige that often or at all really, and I have and I just am starting to craft. Oh um, yeah, a uh, little crafting bit, is so. more valuable than uh, prestige portals, but that means you will be dependent on buying the token outside instead of producing it in game. Yeah, maybe maybe I'll take a look at the current leaderboard. I'll do a little video on what's on that because that that would be a good little thing to do a little video on, yeah. and then I'll and be check able the to announcements. Just make that dis that decision. Yeah, the announcements. Uh, every week there's a, a week event. Every midweek there's a midweek madness, and every weekend there's a weekend event lately on the crafting system. So it's good to. Uh, when you want to use some mod chips, when you want to refine, when you want to craft, to wait for the good events, because it just gets you more points. Yeah, and so here, here's a quick example of what he means. Here's the big time announcement. So, the challenges are to open three epoch chests, craft one cosmetic weapon of, of rarity, epic, or higher, and open two mystery boxes. That also means this weekend there might be a pump in the price of mystery boxes. <laughs> exactly. The, the, so, all these events I, changes the prices of the marketplace for <laughs> temporarily all the time. So you do want to check these events. And so I should make a decision this weekend to either open the boxes for the 5,000 points or probably sell the boxes uh, while, while yeah. they're going up in, in value. And you can always get some <laughs> in two weeks for cheaper. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and then you could probably, and then I could probably rebuy these boxes off the market once the price goes down because people don't want to be opening them for the people who weren't quite paying attention. Yeah, the joys of a free open market. Yep, that I actually think the market is one of the things that has impressed me the most. It, it works really smooth. It's very easy to buy things. It's very easy to move them into the game, out of the game. It's very easy to rent them out. It's very easy to sell them. And then the fact that you built in those discounted rentals is pretty impressive because that's what allows the Discord guild to work so, so well because you have a lot of original people who have a bulk amount of items because they were playing in the very, very beginning or because they made a very large investment when the game was first getting started and now they can go ahead and use those as opposed to selling them to kind of build community and build um, their guild by allowing those to be rented out to players. Yeah, a lot of guilds uh, does that because yeah, OG players have much more than needed in uh, in quantity of uh, NFTs to get in prestige, and yeah, it's a it's a cool way to help new players to just uh, give them access to the the prestige portals for really low fee. And it's very cool. The the guild update itself is only coming. Uh, later it's not gonna come at the 030 but it's supposedly coming during the year and it's gonna be huge because there's gonna be share of assets in the guild indirectly testing birds bees and trees do i still have an echo I, I, I'm, I wonder if it started up for some weird reason. Couldn't imagine nobody would have said that earlier. Interesting. I'll see if he... If he lets me know where that was coming from. Let's go ahead and head out to... 
Uh, I'm all by myself. Let's go to Wastelands. Just wanted to show in the stream a little bit of running around the zone, showing the different dungeons here. Maybe we'll go into one and show a little bit of gameplay. So this is a regular dungeon, just to give an idea of people of where they're at. So the regular dungeons, they won't have a cost to enter, but they will have this bonus roll system for your ability to have you a better chances to get certain items if you were to get a lucky roll. All the dungeons have inherent bonuses and inherent curses. So in this one, the monsters are gonna be moving faster and they're gonna be able to hit me more often. Uh, I will be able to dodge, they won't be able to dodge as much. If I use the staff, it would do bonus damage. And if they block, uh, they're not going to be able to block as well. So this is an interesting dungeon, but it's only level 25. That's a little bit small for me at level 30. There's another one over here. Yeah, it's really the maximum, the, the, the lowest level you could do. 10, ten yeah, levels yeah. apart is really the big, big uh, limit. Yeah, five, five levels uh, above you and five levels below you is really where you want to be targeting when you're doing dungeons, that it falls somewhere within that 10, ten level uh, dungeon scheme. Yeah, let's, and uh, your allies, see. same. And Yeah, and the same for your allies if you want the like all, all the check marks to be in place for the dungeon to give everybody great experience and and just have everyone be happy. Now, this is a prestige portal. As you can see, they look different. They glow, they're golden. And then when you come to these, let's see, can I even bring it up? No, because I don't have the I don't have everything. But so this dungeon would cost three big time token, which is actually pretty cheap. Yeah, um, because for, there's three lines of requirements. So it's yeah. cheapest. So but you'd have to have at least three of the NFTs through the unique and equipped. You'd have to have two cosmetics equipped as well, and you'd have to have uh, oh two cosmetics with gray and two cosmetics with gold. Uh, one cosmetic with gold. So theoretically, this dungeon, if you if you happen to have three epic items that were just the right colors, you could get in pretty easily. <laughs> but that yeah, exactly. that would be that would be you know interesting to see if you had those in your collection or not. So yeah, so this and is all your having, teammates. That's that's and yeah, and then all your teammates have to have the same ones. So sometimes you're going to be looking for a dungeon where you're going to spend a little bit more token to have the ability to have it be less restrictive for you getting in. Maybe that one will give us an example of that. But yeah, it's, it's still a lot of RNG because uh, the price of the portal goes down with more amount of lines, but the difficulty of the line is not taken in consideration for now. So those four ah. epic, it could be one uncommon, one craftable, and uh, one uh, one red, and it would still be that price. Gotcha. This one too has three lines, so it's only six tokens to get in. But it's um... okay. So three with craftable, and one with lunar festival, and the lunar festival ones are craftable, so that kind of a double up. So that's not too bad. For, uh, yeah, and uh, there's a uh, epic and legendary lunar festival. So basically, with one NFT, you get you get credit everything done, and those. you just need two extra for the first line. Oh, they all all of them in this area seem to have the four, the three lines so far. No, that's surprising. <laughs> having having three lines and epic, three portals in a row. That's so improbable. <laughs> I was, I was, I was going to take a look at the price of uh, one that's a little bit more, but I can't find one. Oh, there's a, a floating skull over there. That might be a dungeon I can go in. Mm, skull's oh, not going to be a prestige. Oh, yeah, I know. But there is a prestige here, actually. Let's see if we go four for four. Yep, this one as well. But this one actually has uh, time crystals. For you to go in so as you can see and the different. leprechauns lucky and that's a mythic craft oh wow so so that one is a little harder to get into yeah because the leprechauns is actually gives you one of both of the first lines because it's higher than epic and it is a pre-season so you just you just need three epic or more 
and uh, three preseason. And uh, yeah, Leprechauns uh, had, uh, I think the supply was like 200. All right, this one. Oh, this one looks like it's a little bit big. But let's get rid of this guy. As you can see, so when you, most of the open world, you're not going to find monsters. But when you come up to the regular dungeon, what's up with this happy turret? Oh, that's kind of funny. I don't think I've ever talked to him before. I thought he was a monster. This one, yeah, this one's a little bit big. Too close to the border. Let's see. So the, the, um, it's per person on the prestige dungeon all of you have to have those things to fizz because um and that's one of the things that makes prestiging a little bit more challenging if it's not really coordinated beforehand because everyone has to have the same thing so basically whoever is your lowest person that's the highest dungeon you could go in so if you get your group together and the lowest person's like, oh, I only have three rares, then you can only go in dungeons that needed rares. If everybody has epics, then everyone can go to epics. And then if everyone has legendaries, then you can go into the highest dungeons. But it, it is all different. Oh, that's 19 to 24. Yeah, usually this... parties form depending on the, the lowest require, requirements uh, looked for the party. And uh, yeah. The more requirements the party has, the less time you need to find the, a good dungeon, basically. So, Luke, if you wanted to grind the game solo, it's absolutely uh, possible to play. You're probably going to want to play a Quantum Fixer so you have heals. Not that that's completely necessary. But if you're mm, yeah. playing the game solo, um, you're going to have the least chances of getting items. And, and it was funny because one of the other streamers explained this to me the, the, the best way I've ever heard before. When you go into a dungeon by yourself, uh, there's only so many monsters that are in that dungeon because they don't want to overwhelm the single player. But when you go in with a party, there's immensely more dungeons. Monsters. Yeah, basically, the scale is one or two players. It's a very, very empty dungeon. If you have a good build, it's super easy. If you are starting the game, it's a bit hard. Um, if you play at three or four players, you have a medium populated dungeon, which is like regular MMORPGs. You can really take it in the rhythm you want. And five or six players, you optimize at the maximum. We are really at the edge of hack and slash. You know, it's it's the, the high density, high difficulty, but six times more mobs than if you play solo when you play in a full party. So more XP, more loot. More yeah, NFT and, chances. A, and more NFT chances because every time you kill a monster in a dungeon, there's an NFT chance. So if they run a dungeon and they kill six times more monsters than you do, because when you're in those groups, every monster killed counts as a chance for you compared to you running dungeons by yourself, it's going to be harder. And I can I can tell you this. I found two NFTs in this game so far, and I both times I found them, I was in parties. Now, I was only in parties of, th of three on one of them, and the other one I was in a full party. But I have never found one solo, and I have run a lot of solo dungeons. Now, playing it solo, though, you do earn a lot of time crystals. Uh, uh, well, a decent amount of time crystals, a decent amount of brush fire lattice. So if, if you wanted to just play the game for free, collect those premium currencies, you can sell the brush fire lattice and the raw terracor. You can't sell time crystals, but eventually maybe you would use them um, as they stacked up on your account. You can use them for certain things within the game, and there might become more functionality as the game continues. Um, you know, but you could make maybe a, a couple dollars uh, every few months playing the game that way, and it would just be a video game you get to play and make a few dollars. Um, but to get into the real earning side of this game, you'd either have to get really lucky and find a, a good NFT to start renting out or sell to get yourself going, or you'd have to invest some into the game. But the nice part about it, because it's a free game that you can come and play play and enjoy and get a feel for, you, you can do that before you make that decision to make that big investment into the game. That's kind of like what yeah. I did. Yeah, and it is even a necessity because it's not a game where it's really nice for somebody to just invest and 
and run the thing to make money because the game really rewards time in game so if you really want to use the assets you get properly uh, you uh, you really optimize a lot by knowing how to play the game having a good character with a build done and having friends to play with uh, and that's that's what you can build with your first experience on the free to play aspect build your experience your social uh, social links and learn to meet a lot of people um, that complete different position in the game and in the economy since it's so wide it's very interesting to speak with a lot of people before deciding on how you want to interact with the economy yourself oh wait there's one over there I it's kind of funny five minutes and then i'll have to go yeah, yeah, I was just going to go into a dungeon really quick just to kind of show them how one looks. So I'll just go into one of these small ones if I can't have one that's the right level. Yeah, this one is right. Now, normally I probably might not want to run this with a double damage boost, but I am the highest level of this dungeon, so it might be okay. Um... I'm not going to do a roll because I'm not really going to run this dungeon. And I wouldn't normally roll, guys, unless you're in a party. You're not yeah. really going to want to waste your chips unless you're running with a party and you have a good amount of uh, extra mobs coming in, which allows you to have that extra bonus. The other thing, Luke, is if you're going to play alone, you're probably, as the game progresses, going to have to constantly run dungeons that are on the lower side of your level. Because the dungeons get harder, the objectives get harder as you go up in, into the game. Um, simple, like just a, the same mission becomes just harder to do. Uh, like an example is there's one that's close a corrupted portal. In the beginning of the game, in the lower levels, when you want to close it and monsters spawn, you're still in an open world. The timer is longer. When you get into the higher levels, now a dome encloses you which limits your ability to like kind of run away and kite the monsters. And so you get, you have to now fight them more like right in your face and, and take them on uh, immediately. And so if you're doing that, um, it, it just becomes harder. And that's kind of what happened to me as I started to play. I was playing a alone a lot up into the thirties and I realized this isn't going to work anymore. <laughs> yeah. So, the 20, 20 is a big step up in difficulty and uh, yeah 30 really brings you yeah. to the point of I need friends yep and that's what drove me to be like okay so where can I find friends and eventually I ended up in discords of a couple of a couple different guilds I ended up on the twitch channels and then I realized wow there is a great community out here for this game I just wasn't really looking for them and so that was a little bit on me as opposed to them so once you've entered into a dungeon um, and you come out, you'll get these missions. Like right now I have to go pick flowers. And then this is where the battle part of this game starts to come into effect. So as you can see here, we got our first little couple spiders. Just showing you guys just some of the world running around. Oh, actually I need that potion. I might as well pick it up. <laughs> Here's a little and trick yeah, the magic I... of being able to drop at anything you kill. Passive mobs, bots, mining, <laughs> anything can happen anytime. Yep, the, the, it's, it's one of the great things. So every mob can drop an item, every mob can drop an every NFT. Like he said, if you find ore, like right here, um, you can mine it. And when you mine it, you can get a proc for a chance to find things. I don't know how many times I've mined and found uh, time crystals, which is kind of funny. Uh, my, my group members always laugh at me because they're like, how do you do that? And I go, well, I always just beat you guys to the mine. <laughs> when I play with them. I do like go. you, but better. <laughs> <laughs> so, so cool. Yeah, it's, it's pretty fun. So I just... It, as you know today guys we were just doing a quick hour stream jack was only available for an hour i will be consistently uh, streaming big time in the near future i i currently plan to stream monday tuesday and, and uh friday nights from around 8 to 10 so that's scheduled in on my twitch and i'll be making sure they're scheduled in on my youtube as well 
Oh, the death penalty in the game, Luke, is gold. So you don't lose experience, you don't you lose items, but you do lose a gold. And that can be crippling at times. So it's, it's not uh, something you want to do, but it isn't like the most harrowing effect if you end up losing that, that gold. Um, you can make it back. I'm going to go ahead and leave the dungeon now. Uh, Jack, did you want to say goodbye to them or, or any final words for them? Uh, yes. Uh, well, before I start, thanks for, you for inviting me. Uh, always cool to speak about uh, about that game and uh, I'm sure where we are at. Um, welcome to everyone that's uh, joining in. Wish you all the best loot ever. And, um, and yeah, can't wait to see... Uh, the rest of the adventure we speak very soon all right thanks so much jack i'll go ahead and let you go and then i'm gonna say a quick goodbye to all of them and just sign off take care on bye all right oh yeah hey life and reason good to see you here as well and thanks to everybody that was here this morning for our special first stream with jack and hi to to Nortel that just hit my first time chatter in Twitch. Good to see you. Sorry, I'm uh, reaching the end of my stream right now. One of the things I need to learn how to do is how to raid people on Twitch. So I'm going to have to figure out how to do that. Sorry, guys, I'm more of a YouTuber and less of a Twitch guy. Um, if you have any last couple questions, guys, you can let, let me know. So... Um, Yeah, birds, bees, and trees. I would suggest getting into it. If you have a computer that can run the game and you click on my creator code, you can come in, you can play for free. You could be like Ape. Ape found an NFT on his first day. I don't know how he did that, and it was an epic NFT. Or you could be like me and only find two NFTs over five months, and one, and the one rare one you get is a chair instead of a sword. So... <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for that, Luke. I think it's good that I am a YouTube streamer for the game. There's a lot of people streaming it on Twitch, but um, it's a different audience over there. And I think it's good to have a different audience over here on the YouTube channel able to check this out. Anor, can you make a profit in the game? Sure. But you can't make a lot of profit if you don't invest. We went over this a little while ago, but since you're late, I'll give you a quick little breakdown of this. So when you play the game, you can find NFTs. Anybody can get lucky. Anybody can find one. Then the other thing that you can earn that can make you some money. Chair most broken item. <laughs> Luke's being funny. But let me go ahead and bring up the, the marketplace. So, so the items that you can sell are premium currencies that you find. So as you can see, I found over months of playing 500 and 600 of these. There is a sell option. But the selling, but when you want to sell them, you are selling them in stacks of 500 for a dollar 86. So it's not really much earnings, right? If I decided to sell these, I could get a dollar 86 for these ones. Now, I maybe as the game become more popular, the, these these values will go up. But because you can buy them from the company, they have a cap value. They're $2.50 to buy 500 of them from big time. So basically, the most you could get for these is 250 Now, obviously, as you get higher level in the game, when you find these in the bigger dungeons, instead of finding one, you find two. In the, in the max dungeons, you might find three, four, five when you find them. This is the only free-to-play currency you can get outside of getting extremely lucky and finding an NFT. Now, when you find an NFT, they can end up being... Um, an epic NFT worth hundreds of dollars, a transcendent NFT. I don't know if you can find transcendent very often, but you probably can. Not, not an armory though. But you know, if you found yourself a nice legendary weapon, that could be worth a couple hundred. If you found yourself rare armor, those can be worth a couple hundred. All of this can be felt, found. And to be honest, if you get into the game, and you and you play in a group, and you get a group of friends playing together one of you is probably going to get lucky, but I don't know who it is. So it's not consistent earnings. It's not like some of the other play to earn games out there. It's more a video game that you can play. And on a lucky day, you might end up getting a really cool item drop to you. Yep. 
and so you can earn money like i have found my my one uh rarest item let's see how much it's worth um if i go to decorations and then i search chair so here's the different chairs that are in the game and here's my chair my chair is worth 44 dollars so I could sell my chair for $44. I'm keeping it because I have a space to put it into and I don't really want the $44. But the the um, that was my luckiest find uh, to date. Now, if you got lucky and found yourself an epic chair instead of a, a rare one, that's worth a little bit more, um, as you can see. But not too bad, not too bad. <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah somebody would buy the chair if i tried to sell it um it's because the chairs help spaces do things and you can actually only find chairs in the game um when they first were introduced that's something that's a little bit different about this you you, you get it oh you were expecting two to three bucks nope it was 40 40 and that's because the chairs can only be found in the game loop nobody can craft these yet when craftable chairs come into the game um that's going to change the price of these so the, the, and, and guys, I will say that I think the game is fun to play. If you like arch RPG games, if you like games like Diablo, like World of Warcraft, Big Time is going to be entertaining for you. You can, you can come and play by yourself. You'll just have to run a, an easier dungeon where you'll be like a god and you'll just smite things down. You can join the discords, find groups, come and run big dungeons, big groups. That's going to completely change the game. And so hopefully then one of the next live streams you'll see I'll have my I'll have Ape and Plato with me. We'll be running a dungeon with three and you can see how different it is, how much more monsters spawn, how much more things get in there. They already have some creative bosses in this game. You just don't always fight them. Sometimes you get easy bosses. Sometimes you get creative bosses. So, so the more that you watch, the more interesting things you'll start to see. Yeah, yeah. If you spend a lot of time grinding uh, uh, gold in WoW, you do have to grind a lot of gold in here. But it's it's there's no way to transfer gold. The difference here is if all that time that you spent grinding gold in WoW, here if you spent that same amount of time playing this game and driving into this ecosystem, eventually you're going to find an NFT. I can't promise you it's going to be a super rare nft but i can promise you you'll probably find one and then because I, I i can't i haven't talked to anybody who's been playing for months and really engaged and really playing the game who hasn't found something now there's there's the extremes uh ape of wall street my buddy who got me into the game found his his epic nft day one it, that made him so excited that he aped uh, thousands of dollars into the game ape of ape of wall street is known to do that but um you 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 get into the game like me you play for four months and until i found that rare chair i had only found an emote worth like two dollars <laughs> so it goes it goes both of ways um i also think plato our friend plato zero from Splinterlands, he hasn't done quite as good guys but it varies a, a lot but you know it's pretty early in the morning for me i got up super early so i could do this special stream with our buddy jack and um I want to thank him again for create, make, making it so that I could be a big time creator. This is an exciting opportunity for me to get a little bit of support for sharing this game with you guys. And you guys know who I am. Um, as soon as I can figure out a way to give away some stuff, I'll be giving away some stuff. So, yeah, you know, it, it's a different kind of game. You know, I have to admit that the, the people who play these types of games tend to be a little bit older as opposed to a little bit younger but that might kind of change um once the game is in full release once they're doing more things and one more, more once more stories start to come out like right now that like we need to talk about the people who are found finding great things um one of the things that's kind of crazy there's a pretty crazy story out there to fizz about a kid who basically for Christmas, his dad got him into this game and he was only, I think he's only a teenager. And for Christmas, he asked for um, Time Wardens. Um, and this was back when the game was early and Time Wardens were kind of cheap. And now that kid 
owns a whole bunch of time wardens that he's been renting out and he's earning an income of multiple thousand dollars a month as a teenager just by renting out those time wardens that he had his dad buy him for Christmas. So that's a pretty interesting story. Um, I can tell you this, guys. I've only been as deep into one other game in, in, in beta like this. Or a couple games in alpha and beta. I got into Gala's Townstar early and I made hundreds of thousands of dollars. I got into Splinterlands early. At one point, I had an account worth a million dollars. And now I'm getting into big time early. I don't know that my, I'm going to have the same success over here as over there because I didn't get in at the very, very beginning. But I am in during this pre-stage where you can only get in if you're paying attention, right? It's not hard to get a code, but you have to want to get a code. Right? Because if you don't come and find someone like me or you don't go find somebody on Twitch to give you a code then you can't get in, you can't play this game. Not anybody can download this game and play it yet. So you're getting a chance to get in while while the getting is easy. And if I, like I have to admit, man, back in the day I played hours of WoW 2 and, and, and playing WoW is what got me into NFT games because I played that game really hard. I was in a really big guild. I had some of the best gear you could have. And then after playing for a long time, I was sitting there with all this awesome gear and I'm like, man, Unless I want to break terms of service, I can't sell this character, I can't sell this time, I can't sell any of that stuff. So that that is what made me look for something different in how I found the NFT world back when I found it. Because I was like, there's got to be a better way to do this. Um, and, you know, hopefully it, it is there. Yeah, yeah, and I can see, Luke, how if CSGO was the one that did it to you, maybe you played tons of time in that game, you earned tons of skins, you earned tons of weapons, you earned all these things from battle passes you paid for, and then you found out you don't really own any of that. And and eventually, that that's the thing that a lot of players are going to have to go through uh, to want to come over to Web3. The other thing is Web3 needed to catch up. Right, most Web three games, Splinterlands, even 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 um, Townstar, they were simple games, two D games, um, not impressive. Big Time is a full three D world, nice graphic, serious game, and like he said, they're only ten percent into what this game is going to be. It's going to be a massive game, like World of Warcraft, at some point, with hopefully a massive amount of players. Um, and I don't see anything that's going to stop them from building this game. Ah, okay. I wasn't sure if CSGO lets you keep those or not. Guys, I would love to stay and chat with you for hours. I will be on again, um, I think, tomorrow night live streaming this. I might even go on tonight if I play. But I got to get going because I have to get my kids up and get them ready for school here pretty soon. So... I have to do a few things before I do that. But it was great hanging out with you. Thank you so much, everybody, for coming out. So. Yeah, 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 Nort. Um, in my pinned message, you can click on it to join the game. You play through the walkthrough, then you start playing the game. After after that, you can you can earn F NFTs. You can find search big time on Twitch to find other streamers. And when I'm playing, and after you're in the game and been through a thing, you can always ask me, and I'll I'll play dungeons with you as well. So. All right. Thanks everybody. I'm gonna go ahead and get out of here now. <laughs>